All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Welcome back to our Sunday night Bible study. And I say it every week. I'm going to keep saying it. Thank you so much for taking the time to uh, participate, uh, to join in, to, to watch these videos. I appreciate the comments that I get each week, and it really does mean a lot. And, and it encourages me. It builds me up. And I, I pray that these lessons do the same for you. I said last week's lesson about trusting God was uh, a good reminder lesson. It was a lesson that I needed, and this is another one of those lessons. And I guess this is a disclaimer, uh, and the disclaimer is this. I don't want this lesson to come across as fussy, because that's not how this lesson was designed. It, it's not about fussing at anybody or, or anything like that. This lesson is another reminder for me. Uh, th this lesson is about something that it, it is easy to fall into if we're not careful. And that's this attitude of, of entitlement. And I, you hear that word and it has such a negative connotation to it. And, and I think for good reason, but I think if, if I'm not careful, and I'm talking to myself here, if I'm not careful, I can develop this attitude of I'm doing things really well. Uh, I, I'm, I'm obedient to God. And I start developing an attitude, if I'm not careful, that somehow God owes me because of my obedience. God, good things need to happen because I'm living a really good life. You know, I, I'm, I'm, doing, I'm doing well. We, we see this entitlement attitude in the world and it, it, it bothers us. We don't like to see people behave that way. And unfortunately, what hap things that happen in the world can filter over in the church. And we've seen that as well. I need to make sure that I don't develop an attitude of thinking that my obedience has earned me something with God. Because if, if that's my mindset, then what happens is I begin to grow prideful. And it happens. It happens in a lot of things. I remember when I was 13 years old, and it's a sports story, so be prepared. When I was 13 years old, I led the Babe Ruth League, which is 13 through 15 year olds, I led the entire league in home runs. I hit six or seven home runs that year, I don't even remember. I made all stars, and things started off well. I was one of the best players on the team, and I really started getting a little full of myself. I started really talking about what a great player I was, and, and even if I wasn't saying it out loud, I really thought it in, in, in my head. And I developed a really bad attitude. In fact, I developed such a bad attitude that a lot of my teammates didn't like to be around me. And if I'm honest, my dad even admitted he didn't like being around me sometimes because I was just arrogant. Now, I got humbled, and I got humbled bad because I, we, we were the first team from Sims, Alabama to win state. We won the state all-star tournament when I was 13 years old. But you know how many hits I had in that entire tournament? Zero. Never got a hit. I got in one of the worst slumps I'd ever been in. And you talk about embarrassing because I had talked myself up, and I had to eat a lot of crow. Same can happen spiritually. You know, we, if we're not careful, we, we start looking at our, our, at our obedience and it causes us to, to look down on everyone else. And we begin to, to resemble the Pharisee from Luke chapter 18. Luke 18, beginning in verse 9, you know, we're told the parable of two men who go up to pray, one, Phar one a Pharisee, the other a tax collector. And I just want to read the prayer of this Pharisee. He says, the Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. Not with God. He prayed with himself, it says. I think it's interesting wording there. God, I thank you that I'm not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I, I possess. What he's saying is, God, look how obedient I am. Look how faithful I am to you. 
man, I'm so much better than these other people. That's what we have to guard against. Meanwhile, the tax collector couldn't even lift his eyes towards heaven, but yet hit himself across the chest, saying, Father, be merciful to me, a sinner. This idea of, of pride and, and, and puffing ourselves up because of what we're doing, in reality, it's a childish attitude. You know, you expect that out of a 13-year-old. You don't expect that out of a 30-year-old, but we got to guard against it. Paul himself said we're supposed to grow out of childish behavior, 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 11. So how do we guard against it? How do we keep from developing this prideful or entitled attitude? How can I overcome this entitlement attitude? And that's where I want us to, that's what I want us to talk about tonight. And again, this isn't a lesson pointing the finger at anybody. This is a reminder of me that I need to keep my ego in check. This is a reminder to me that, that even if I'm, I, I'm, I'm on a roll and I'm doing things really well, I still have a whole lot of room to grow, and I still have a long way to go. There are two types of, of cultures that we will choose to follow. The first type of culture is, I deserve it, you owe me. Look at what I do. Look at what I've done. But you see, the culture that God wants us to submit to is Christ's culture. And it's this, I submit because I owe. So let's talk about that to, tonight. I want you to open your Bibles with me to Luke chapter 17 because that's where this lesson is going to be from. Luke chapter 17. And we're going to look at verses 7, and t 7 through 10. And I want to go ahead and read that and then we're going to, uh, to point out three things. Now, Luke 17, beginning in verse 7, And which of you, having a servant plowing or tending sheep, will say to him, When he has come in from the field, come at once and sit down and eat. But will he not rather say to him, Prepare something for my supper and gird yourself and serve me till I have eaten and drunk, and afterwards you will eat and drink? Does he thank the servant because he did the things that were commanded him? I think not. So likewise, you, when you have done all things which you were commanded, say, We are an unprofitable servants. We have done what was our duty. To do, You see, this idea of getting a little full of ourselves sometimes because of our obedience is nothing new. That's why Jesus is talking about this in Luke chapter 17. So if Jesus tells us that we need to be on guard against this, then we need to listen to what he has to say. So how can I keep from growing arrogant? How can I keep from growing prideful or entitled when it comes to my obedience to God? Number one, it's by remembering that God is, is master. And that seems obvious. And you look at verses 7 and 8, and that may seem like an insult to your intelligence. And I don't mean it that way, but, but sometimes I need to be reminded that I'm not in charge. I need to be reminded that I'm not master, that God is master. You know, Paul told us something interesting in Romans 6 and verse 16. He tells us that we are the servants of whether of whatever we obey, whether sin unto death or obedience unto righteousness. And so that really just gives us two choices. We're either the servants of sin or we're the servants of righteousness. Two choices. It's, it's pretty clear, pretty simple. But what we do so many times is we think, well, I'm not serving Satan. I'm not serving sin. I, I'm obeying God, but we just want to maintain control. We, we want to feel like we're in control. Maybe we want to feel like we're we're the master. But I, I've got to remember that, that I'm not. I'm not the master of my life. I'm either serving sin or I'm serving God. When I obey the gospel, Paul tells me in verses 17 and 18, I've been freed from the bondage of sin. I've been set free from sin. So now we are free to, to serve God. To serve God. And this is obedience. And we stress this in our teachings. We stress this in our Bible class, uh, in our Bible class teachings, that we are to be obedient to God. And yes, we are. We are to be obedient to God. But the whole point of this lesson is that sometimes we look at our obedience and we begin to, to puff ourselves up. We begin to say, look at what I've done for you, God. Look how, look how good I am. Look how obedient I am. But notice what Paul talks about in Romans 6. 
as, as we read Romans 6, you see there's no, there's no room for pride or for saying, hey, look at, at what I'm doing. You see, Paul makes it clear that we serve God, that He is Master, that we are His servants. And, and I've, I've heard some uh, complain in the past that that's a terrible way to think of our relationship to God. That God is, is, is Master and we're His slave? You know, slaves, they, they really couldn't, they, they weren't, they never forgot that they were servants. They never forgot that they were slaves. They never forgot who was in charge. They were never able to, to boast them or puff themselves up in that way. But yet we do that with God. We forget. And we say things like it's a terrible way to think of our relationship to God as master to servant or master to slave. But it's an important thing to remember. It's important to remember that He is Master and we are His servants. And I want us to, to remind ourselves of this. Look at the results. When I, I said there's only two choices. I'm either the servant of sin or I'm the servant of righteousness. If I'm the servant of sin, the result is death. For the wages of sin is death, Romans 6, 23. But the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. The result... The result of being a servant of God is eternal life. But here's the point. Don't forget who's in charge. Don't forget that God is master and we are His servants. And I willingly serve Him because of what He's done for me. You know, we look at passages such as Romans 5, 6 through 8. We look at passages such as John 3 and verse 16. Why would I make God master of my life? I make God master of my life because He's held nothing back from me. He's proven Himself to be trustworthy. And so I'm not serving out of fear. I'm serving out of faith and out of love. But if I remember I'm just doing what He tells me to do, if I remember that, that He is master, it really keeps that attitude of, of pride, it keeps it away. So, number one, I need to remember that God is master. All right, here's point number two to help us to overcome this feeling of entitlement or, or pride or arrogance, whatever you want to call it. And it's this, I've got to remember that God is no one's debtor. God is master, number one. Number two, God is no one's debtor. I want us to remind ourselves of a passage that I think we can quote by heart. It's Ephesians 2 and verse 8. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and it is not of your own doing. It is a gift of God. Ephesians 2 and verse 9 says, Not a result of works, so that no one may, may boast. The, the point is, is this that Paul is making. No man ever did or ever could do merit or earn God's redeeming love. We're just, it's impossible. You know, if, and... That's why Paul says we're saved by grace. And if we could earn it, if we could merit it, then we're not saved by grace anymore. We're saved by our own doing. And the, the beauty of God's salvation is this. I can't do it on my own, but He's offered it anyway. I'm not good enough. I, I don't deserve it, but He's offered it anyway. What I deserved was death, but yet Jesus took my place. He, became, he who knew no sin became sin. It's a beautiful picture. And it's something that we need to be reminded of because it reminds me that God owes me nothing. But we owe Him more than we could ever repay. And that goes back to the parable of the unmerciful servant of Matthew 18. We're not going to read through it again. We looked at it last week in one of our lessons. But you see, when I remember that I'm saved by grace through faith, when I remember what God has done for me, it does not allow me to develop this mindset of, of look at what I've done. Look how, look how faithful I am. You know, they're not as faithful as I am, God. You know, they, they don't love you as much as I love you because, man, I'm, I'm really killing it right now. I'm really doing well right now. Our responsibility or duty to God is to be obedient. That's what He desires of us. You know, our... our our responsibility, our duty to God is to be obedient. 1 John 5 and verse 3 makes that clear. This is the love of God, that we keep His commandments and His commandments are not burdensome. That's what it means to love God. 
And so God expects obedience. He doesn't expect perfection. He does expect faithfulness. We discussed that last Sunday morning. The, the point is God expects obedience. But that's not something that I do perfectly. I may do it well sometimes, but I still don't do it perfectly. And God knows that we're going to do it imperfectly. 1 John 1, verses 8 and 10. But He still offers forgiveness. He still offers, verse 7 of 1 John 1, the continual cleansing of His Son's blood. And so, how can I, how, how can I develop this attitude, this prideful attitude when it comes to my obedience, when I recognize that I didn't deserve God's salvation in the first place, and God expects obedience, and I still don't obey perfectly, but yet He's still offering me forgiveness. He still offers me the continual cleansing of His Son's blood if I'm faithful. Man, that's... You see, there's no room for pride there. But let's just say for argument's sake, and this is kind of what Jesus says here in Luke 17 in verse 10, let's just say for argument's sake that you are able to keep God's commands perfectly. You are able to obey perfectly. Do you have any room to brag in that? And Jesus says, no, you're just doing what you've been told to do. You're just fulfilling your duty to God. See, some look at this and they try to twist it to, to say that, well, God doesn't care if we obey Him or not. No, that, that's not what this teaches in, in any way. You know, I, I have to make sure that I'm, I'm faithful. Go back to Revelation 2 and verse 10. Be faithful unto death and I will give you a crown of life. God expected faithfulness from those Christians. He didn't tell them, hey, you live any way that you want to live and I'll save you. No, that's not what he told them. He said, I, I, I expect, I desire faithfulness. Hold on, be faithful to me and then I will, I will give you a crown of life. God expects faithfulness. And I'm sure He appreciates our obedience. That's not the point. The point is this. He has given me everything. I owe Him everything. And so there's no room. There is no room for pride or arrogance. There's no entitlement here because He's not my debtor. He's, done, he's given me everything. I owe Him everything. Alright, number three. Number three. I keep from developing a, a prideful attitude by remembering that every good thing that I have comes from God. You know, Luke 17, 10. James 1, 17, I think, is, is the passage that we look at more than anything when it comes to that. You know, the fact is, we were lost. We were unworthy. We were sinners. Romans chapter 5, verses 6 through 8 tells us, but God loved the world enough to send His only begotten Son, John 3 and verse 16. So really, how could we ever repay that debt? We can't. You know, salvation's the greatest thing that we have. And Where did it come from? It came from God. And not only did God give us His Son, not only did He say, hey, I'm going to forgive you one time, and He didn't say that, but you know, He could have said that, and He would have been just and 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 holy in, in doing that. I'm going to just give you one chance. I'm going to send my son to die for you, and you get one chance. And if you mess up, that's it. But as we talked about in 1 John 1 and verse 7, he doesn't even do that. He, he says in verse 9 that if we are faithful to confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. We look around our life, and not only do we remember, need to remember that God is master, not, not only do we need to remember that He is no one's debtor, but, but number three, we look at all the good things that we have, and in, we don't. those good things didn't come from me. I didn't do these good things myself. No, every good and perfect gift is because of the God that I serve. It comes from above. And when I remember those three things, it puts my obedience in proper perspective. I know that I serve a loving God. I know that He appreciates me. He appreciates the effort. But 
there is no way that I could ever repay what he's done for me. So every day I live in gratitude. My obedience, it's not, a, it's not a way for me to look down on others or to elevate myself over someone else. No, my obedience is, is out of gratitude for God, out of gratitude of everything that He's done for me. And I want everyone to know how thankful I am that He is my Master. I want to let everyone know, hey, I'm unworthy. I go back to what Paul said in 1 Timothy 1 and verse 15 about being the chief of sinners. But what is Paul doing there? Paul is saying, look at me. <laughs> he saved me. Jesus Christ came to save sinners of whom I am chief. Look at what he's done for me. Paul wasn't refusing to forgive himself. Paul was refusing to forget what God had done for him. <laughs> and that's the attitude that we need. It would have been very easy for Paul to grow prideful and arrogant. I talked to our young people about this. Uh, this past Sunday morning in our Bible class about it would have been so easy for Paul being the apostle that he was. And often we, we list him as the number one apostle. It would have been easy for him to grow prideful, and he didn't. Now the thorn in the flesh, he had, by his own admission, he said, that thorn in the flesh was given to me to keep me from growing conceited. That just shows that we all need help when it comes to maintaining a proper perspective. If Paul needed help not to grow conceited, we need some help too. And that's what this lesson is. As I said, it's a reminder of me, uh, it's a reminder to me that I, I don't need to get too full of myself. That my obedience is not a, does not give me the right to look down on anyone else. It does not, my obedience does not give me the right to stand before God and say, God, you owe me. My obedience is what He expects of me. It's the least that I can do because of everything that He's done. I hope this makes sense. Um, I, you know, this, this entitlement attitude, it's the polar opposite of the attitude that God wants us to have. Uh, it's the exact op polar opposite of the faith revealed in the Bible. So let's, let's, remember, let's remember what God has done for us. That our our, let's remember our responsibility to Him, and let's live every day with a day of and out of gratitude. Pray with me, please. Dear Heavenly Father, thank You for this day. Thank You for loving us. Thank You for being our God. Help us to remember that You are our Master. Help us to remember that we, You are no one's debtor, that we owe You everything. And help us to, to be reminded that every good and perfect gift that we have comes from you and so let's live help us to live every day with thankful hearts help us to live every day in obedience to you and help us to to not be prideful and help us not to be conceited when it comes to to obedience thank you for loving us and we ask all of this in your son's name amen thank you for being with us i look forward to being with you next time